How's it going guys? The Dead by Daylight 6th anniversary is right around the corner. The new killer has been leaked and is called The Dredge. If you want to see a more in-depth video about the upcoming chapter and how everything new fits into the meta, let me know in the comments. Now, if you haven't seen this series before, we look over four community created killer concepts, go through their powers, perks, and then rate them from the weakest to the best. Since the Dredge is an original killer, all four concepts will also be original. We have the Mimic, the Weaver, the Rain, and the Hanged Man. Now, without any context, I asked you guys which one of these concepts would be your choice for a new killer, and you overwhelmingly chose the Mimic. Although I did see many comments worried about how a killer like this could be implemented without being completely countered by Survive with Friends. So let's look at Awesome Allen's Mimic concept and see how it would work. Okay, starting out with the power, we have Cannibal's Cry. Your ability to mimic the survivors allows for a deadly display of deception and trickery. Press and hold the power button to replace your terror radius with the sounds of injured survivors for a period of time. When you hit a survivor while the ability is active, you let out the scream of that survivor as if they were hooked, audible across any distance. This ability must recharge after the duration has ended. When you hook a survivor while Cannibal's Cry is active, all other survivors outside of your terror radius gain the blindness and hindered status effect for 8 seconds. I guess that would help a little bit with like barbecue? Not sure. Special ability Windigo Psychosis. When using Cannibal's Cry, press the active ability button to replace it with Wendigo Psychosis. For the remaining time, while active, all survivors' auras are revealed to each other, but their auras take the form of the Mimic, and they will each emit your terror radius. Your aura is also shown during this time, but all auras will only be shown outside 40 meters, allowing for uncertainty when close. This ability supersedes all survival or reading perks and abilities during this time. Recharging will not start until either ability's durations have ended. After hooking a survivor, either ability will end and will need to recharge. Special Ability Crouch Hold the active ability button while not using Cannibal's Cry to crouch and reduce your tear radius to 0 meters. No movement for 5 seconds while crouch will Increase your tear radius to 12 meters and it will be replaced with the sound of a generator. When uncrouching, your movement speed is reduced slightly for 4 seconds. Okay, so there's a lot to break down there. That's quite an interesting amount of abilities. And the real question is, how do you down somebody with these abilities? Because it does seem very deceptive, but I'm not sure how you can take advantage of it in a chase. Um, I don't see any kind of like exposed or anything like, for instance, like the trap generator thing where you, you know, you pretend to basically be a generator. It will like maybe lure a survivor near you, but then you're, you're debuffed. Your movement speed is reduced for four seconds. So I, I like the ideas, but I feel like all of it's very uh unrewarding so if you do manage to trick somebody and you get a hit you don't really get any value out of it i don't really see how to get downs outside of a complete hit and run build and we all kind of know that hit and run builds now don't really work too well and that's an understatement they they don't work they literally do not work all right so moving on to the perks we have Butterfly effect. Every time a survivor stuns you with a pallet, you will gain a token up to a maximum of 5 tokens. For every token, your bloodlust movement speed is increased by 10%. You lose a token for every missed base attack. So essentially, after you eat 5 pallets, you would be going 50% faster once bloodlust 1 activated. I think that the percentage of the speed might need to be toned down i think 50 percent is too strong i don't even think there's room for counterplay at that point but i really like the concept so there's definitely some synergy with this perk you could use it with beast of prey which would be pretty strong and it's a good chaser perk you have to work up to it a bit you have to eat five pallets I definitely think there's some value here. I like the idea of a perk that makes M1 killers stronger, but doesn't really add anything to the stronger killers. So it's a good mix of buffing weaker killers without indirectly buffing stronger killers. So I think it's actually a pretty good idea for a perk, even though I know people don't like Bloodlust. Who do we have a locker perk? You start the trial with three tokens. Every time you sacrifice a survivor, this perk activates for 12 seconds and a token is consumed. While active, the auras of any survivors hiding in lockers are shown and continue to be 
be shown if they leave. All right, that's a terrible perk. The only value in this perk would be that you would see the last survivor if they were trying to hide in a locker. Overall, a very weak perk. I just don't see it getting used, especially with Iron Maiden being in the game. And we have a Hex perk. Hex Deception, a hex that deceives and manipulates your victims. This hex totem appears as a dull totem and renders two of the nearest generators completely invisible to all. The generators cannot be interacted with or collided with as well. If this is cleansed and there are other active hex totems on the map, two are chosen to appear as a dull totem. The perk becomes stronger if you use it with other hex totems, so it's encouraging you to use other hex totems, and it's forcing the survivors to cleanse basically all of the dull totems on the map, so extremely powerful. It, using this with something like Devour Hope and other hex perks, it's extremely strong. I, it would definitely get used. I don't know if PBD could handle something like generators being invisible and then reappearing because my first thought is the generator reappears and you're standing where it reappears and then it spawns on top of you basically and you get stuck in it so i'm not so sure if uh dbd could handle that but if it could handle it this would be an extremely strong meta perk i'd be shocked if this wasn't used by pretty much every killer at high mmr well there you have the mimic i definitely think that there's a lot of cool ideas in there but ultimately it's just falls a bit flat i my favorite part of this whole concept is the butterfly effect. I think that it's a, a pretty cool idea. Um, last Resort's extremely weak, and Deception might just be a bit too strong and annoying. The Weaver. I like how the tear radius of the Weaver is 32 meters, and the, the power is called Spider Sense, which is, is pretty funny. You have the ability to weave webs around the trial to slow down and track survivors. You start the trial with 10 webs. Press the power button to weave a web onto the ground or one of the following objects. Windows. Survivors that vault through a webbed window will be hindered for 5 seconds. Pallets. Webs must be removed to be able to interact with webbed pallets. And doorways. Survivors that walk or run through webbed doorways will be hindered for 5 seconds. Webs take 3 seconds to weave. If you run out of webs to weave, the new web will replace the oldest web. A web on the ground will cover a 5 meter area. If any survivor comes into contact with a web, you will be notified and can press the secondary ability button to enter Hunting Crawl. While in Hunting Crawl, survivors will be revealed by Killer Instinct for 10 seconds. Gain a 15% movement speed for 10 seconds. You can attack survivors which will end the ability. You can crawl over pallets and you'll vault windows 100% faster. After coming out of Hunting Crawl, you can't attack survivors for 5 seconds. Hunting Crawl has a cooldown of 40 seconds. Hunting Crawl's pretty sweet, I'm not gonna lie. When I read the first part of the power, the first thing I was thinking is, okay, it takes 3 seconds to weave a web, and you can web pallets, doorways, and windows. So what are survivors gonna do while you're taking 3 seconds to do that? They're going to shift W, they're gonna run away from you. But if they happen to step into one of your other webs somewhere, somehow, depending on how visible they are, and you go into hunting crawl, you can actually make up for the ship W. So it is pretty well thought out in a lot of ways. It takes a little bit of foresight to get the most value out of, but I think that's okay. I think there is definitely a lot of potential with this killer. As far as the killer like look goes though, I'm not sure if DBD can actually handle a real spider like this. They would probably have to do some kind of man spider hybrid, but looks pretty cool. Let's look at the perk. And who could have guessed that the first perk is Arachnophobia. You become obsessed with one survivor. While in chase with your obsession, Arachnophobia activates. All survivors other than your obsession will hear your terror radius and suffer from a 20% penalty to generator repair speed. This perk has a cooldown of 60 seconds. This might sound incredibly strong, but it's really not that incredibly strong. It's actually just a decent perk. It only works with the obsession, so if you want to get the max value out of it, you're going to have to pair it with things like Nemesis and Fertile Chase. And even then, there's going to be kind of a lot of things that have to go right. So I don't think it's that bad of a perk. 20% only while in chase plus a 60 second cooldown. So it might just be strong enough to get value out of, but maybe a little bit too specific to be used now we have 
our first of two hexes, Hex Tangled Up. The entity will block one window vault earlier when survivors vault in a chase. Any window blocked by the entity will affect four survivors in the trial and won't unblock until the totem is cleansed. So what this basically is, is a stronger version of Hex Crowd Control. All right, Hex Bloodthirsty. Three extra dull totems will spawn into the trial, dear God. This Hex will switch to a dull totem every 30 seconds. Any survivor within 20 meters of this totem suffers from the exposed status effect. The effect will linger for 10 seconds when leaving the totem's range. The totem can't swap while being cleansed. I think this is actually a pretty like legitimate idea for a hex totem, but I think having the three extra dull totems spawn into the trial aspect of it is too much. I think you need either or, right? You need a perk that adds extra dull totems all on its own as just a perk, and then you could have something like Hex Bloodthirsty that's like a separate perk. But having both of those together, I think is a bit too much. All right, so the Weaver, I think a pretty solid concept. Uh, the perks may be a little bit, uh, some issues with that, but overall, I think it would be a fun killer to play for sure. Now we have the Rain. The picture looks kind of like the Cable Guy, but like mixed with I Know What You Did Last Summer. All right, Tearful Downpour is the power. The rain can stalk survivors one at a time to create and strengthen a rainstorm across the map that obscures him and his terror radius. After a survivor is stalked for five seconds, they can no longer be stalked. Starting at tier one, tearful downpour tears up as follows. Tier two, a thunderstorm can be heard in the distance. Tier three, rain begins falling across the map. Tier four, Rain falls harder and lightning rumbles randomly every 5 to 10 seconds, giving the rain a noise cue a moment beforehand. Don't know what that means. Tier 5, rain becomes torrential, heavily obscuring the map. Upon reaching tier 3, lightning will strike in the distance when the rain successfully attacks a survivor. Whether randomly or from a basic attack, lightning will quickly flash bright across the map and will be followed by deafening thunder, potentially disorienting survivors. Okay, could potentially be a bit annoying. So basically every survivor you stock gives you an extra ability towards your power. And it seems like the power is completely passive. So his entire power is literally that he stalks you and then he becomes invisible. So that's a bit meh. Let's, is there anything here I'm missing? This is an, an incredibly simple killer. I, I like that he's named the chapter of the calm before the storm though. That's kind of cool. It's not that I wouldn't like to play this killer based on that power, because I do enjoy like, you know, deceptive and stealth killers and whatnot, but not having like any secondary ability is a bit of a letdown, really. I, I think I saw a, a comment like one of you guys left uh, about how maybe like a character like this could have like acid rain. And I think that that's more of the direction I would go with this, make it like a hybrid Michael Myers thing. But this as it is right now is too simple. Okay, let's take a look at the rain perks. Eye of the Storm. Five seconds after a hex totem is cleansed, a random dull totem becomes a hex totem with the same effect as the cleansed hex totem. After 30 seconds, the new hex totem cleanses itself. So we have like a more pathetic version of undying here. I'm going to scratch this perk off the list. <laughs> Overall, I don't know. Unless I'm missing something, I don't think this perk uh, is worth existing. Never strikes twice. After hooking a survivor, all generators regress by 25% unless being repaired. If the same survivor is hooked twice in a row, this perk is disabled. I'm a bit torn on this uh, perk here. Because it, 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 when I originally read it, I thought, wow, that's like insanely strong. But how often is a generator actually not being repaired while you're hooking a survivor? Unless they're trying to maybe like counter like dead man switch and pain resonance. I definitely think that there would be no issue uh, with this perk existing if it was a Scourge hook. I think that for just basic hook, it might potentially be too strong, but you would almost have to test it. And then lastly, we have Downfall. For every token, skill checks are 10% more likely. Great skill checks have 10% reduced effectiveness, and for survivors outside of your terror radius, the size of skill check success zones is reduced by 10%, so all of this could potentially go up to 50%. Yeah, I, I like this perk. You know, it doesn't like pop at you and go like, oh, it's a meta perk 100%, but at the same time, it like, you can kind of feel that 
with mixing this perk with different things, you could actually get some interesting builds out of it, which is what I'm all about. So I like it. Moving on to the final man. We have the hanged man and he even made a little video. His power is the hanging tree. Those who hang have a sacred obligation to be with those who hang with them and those who have hanged with them for eternity. The dead don't take kindly to such an obligation becoming unfulfilled. Special attack, dead man's knot. Press and hold the ability button to charge dead man's knot. Release it to throw a noose upwards which travels a distance determined by how long the ability was charged. Once the noose begins to arc down, the entity will assist the hanged man by manifesting a structure to swing the noose's rope over. Doing so will make the noose swing downward. Both the noose and the structure are capable of going through walls and ceilings. If a survivor is hit by a noose, they will be hoisted a few feet in the air and cannot move until they have completed the cut loose action. A survivor who has cut loose will still have a noose on their neck. A survivor with a noose on their neck will gradually increase their suffocation bar over time. Survivors can take off the noose by removing it. The removal time of the noose tremendously increases based on the time they have had it on. Once a survivor's suffocation bar is full, they will suffer the following effects. Blindness and oblivious. When the survivor sprints, their sight will be blurred and tremendously reduced. The hanged man can cast the hanging tree on them. Special ability. The hanging tree. Press the secondary ability button to teleport to the closest survivor with a full suffocation bar. This ability can be cancelled by pressing the attack button. Definitely a bit of a strange power here. It's almost like a mix of like Death Slinger and like Pinhead, but also Trapper. It's very strange because I'd imagine you'd want to try to get a noose on every survivor. But then if the survivors could just pull the noose off, you wouldn't get any of the effects on them, which means that you couldn't really use it. For hit and run because you kind of need to use it to go after one survivor the synergy of all these abilities don't really seem like they mesh very well together which would probably be my biggest complaint about this killer moving on to the perks we have awaiting noose when a survivor goes in a direction that directly intersects the basement entrance they suffer from the oblivious status effect to an extent, it's okay if you use it with an offering that puts the basement in the middle building and then you can kind of you can get more value out of it, I think, but it would need like a lasting effect. It would have to persist for like 30 seconds or something after you look away in order for it to really be valuable enough. Otherwise, it would just be used as like a basement camping build or something weird. Acrophobia, which I don't know what that word means, but I'm assuming it means a fear of suffocation or nooses or something. When a survivor is at least 1.5 meters above you and in your terror radius, their aura is revealed to you. I actually like that perk. I think it's very simple and uh, cool. The, the funny part of it is it doesn't really work on stealth killers, but I think that's okay. And lastly, we have Slipknot. When two survivors within four meters of each other run, as long as one of the survivors is in the healthy state, they both suffer from the hindered status effect. Overall, I feel like his power is kind of convoluted and also not very strong at the same time. Maybe it could be, but I don't see it. So there you have all four killer concepts. And I have to say that in fourth place for me, as these uh, concepts are presented without me adding anything to them, I would say the rain comes in fourth place just because it's so unbelievably simplistic that it doesn't even really feel like there's any point to play the killer. You're literally just a guy who doesn't really have a terror radius, and also the survivors are being annoyed by a lot of sound, which if you want that experience right now, just play Ghost Face, because it's basically the same thing. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Uh, the next one should probably be pretty obvious as well, the Hanged Man. I saw that a lot of people don't really want more ranged killers, and I kind of understand, but I personally kind of like ranged killers. I think they're, they are fun to play as, but this specific version of a ranged killer is not hooking me. And then we have the final two, the Weaver and the Mimic. And I'm with you guys when I say that a Mimic idea in DVD is extremely interesting and i would love for behavior to really like try it you know regardless really of the outcome but 
between these two specific concepts, I feel like the Weaver is more thought out. It's creepy as hell. I know a lot of people with arachnophobia legitimately would like not be able to play against this killer, but I think it's just a stronger concept. So there you have it. How do you think these concepts stand up to the dredge? And would you want one of these killers in a future chapter? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and have a good one.